Man, Ro, I tell you what, I was paying someone six grand a month, someone domestic, thinking I'm making a good move, and we what? didn't get really any work out of that, man. Have no. you ever faced something like that? <laughs> oh my God, six grand? Are you kidding me? That is, that is, you know, in the Amazon space, that can, that could go a long way, my man. Yeah, and we did grand. it. Uh, wait, a minute, wait a hold on a sec. I know somebody that's got something to say on that, right? What? My what? Goodness <laughs> gracious, Nick. That's what I've up? been saying when I look back what? on this. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, man, it's all part of the game, right? You you live and you learn. Like you've got to be willing to make mistakes, you know, right? At the end of the day, yeah. Because um, I learned a lot from that, right? I didn't communicate clearly. I assumed a lot of things. Uh, this person's gonna, you know, tell me the people they need. They're gonna find the people they need. They're gonna interview them. They're gonna put the job descriptions together. You think they they think like you, Nick. That's what you would do, right? right? And I and. And that's what I would do, right? You know, all of the details. And I think um, for me, it's eye-opening how many people, it doesn't matter how many people you're going to bring in, none of them are going to think like you. And right. it, you're going to get at most 80% of you in them. And that 20% bugs you to death. Because like, why can't they, just like you said, man, why can't they just do these other little things? And I'm, you know, I think about what Gary Vee says about this. You know, it's, it's probably the best you're going to get. You know, nobody's really interested like you, like the right. business owner. And it's just going to be like, wait a minute. Let me look back to yesterday's notes. Yeah. I'll, as a matter of fact, Nick, yeah, I did talk to that person. This is how much they want. And I've got three more on the list right now. I'm going on LinkedIn tomorrow. <laughs> right. You want that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's tough to come by, man. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, nothing, it, it's those, you know, communicating clearly is what I, I learned, the right expectations, right? Like, just like you said, understanding that, hey, I, I don't need someone to be just like me. I need to figure out my new role in the business uh -huh. and what I have to be focused on and, and then bring these people in and set my expectations clearly and not assume any that's the mistake i keep making in life business wherever <laughs> it's like stop assuming things <laughs> yeah and just yeah. communicate yeah you you have to and communication is at the key of this and it, it, with my own team that's the one thing i um i don't want to say we struggle we don't struggle with it but you know um we do have a large team of virtual employees in, from the Philippines and culture is a little bit different. You know, they're not as aggressive like you and I, like, like, like we were saying, what, what are yeah. you talking about, Nick? <laughs> they are, you know, a little more genteel in their yes. approach. Uh, and I love that about them. And I say this to them all the time. I love that you all are genteel that I, that's endearing. But I, when you clock in, put a little bit of that to the side, still have right. it. Put that to the side because you have a task to do. You have a job to do. And if you're not getting some from one of the teammates or colleagues or myself, press the button, Pick, you know, get on Zoom with me or whoever the colleague is or the other team or the other department. You got to push the buttons. And yeah, that's where, you know, where, where, you know, understanding this, this kind of cultural differences helps with different team members. But I find that for my team, that tends to be the case as well. But I tell them, communicate. Don't be afraid. You're not bothering me. You need something from me. Don't feel like you're bothering. And I think a lot of right. people at work sometimes think if I send if I send Nick a message, I'm bothering him. Yes. Right? And it can't be about, you can't look at it like I'm bothering Nick or bothering somebody else on the team. This is what we need. The deadline's tomorrow. I don't have it from you. Right. Yeah. You. The, I, I struggle with that as well. And it's all such like a big balancing act because then... I think some people start to see it as black and white, and it's not that either. Like, there's a time and a place. There's context. There's a there's a rhyme and a reason to why you want to be more aggressive at these times and less aggressive at these times. 
and sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. I always kind of take it back to like cooking, bro. I don't know how much cooking you do, I do right? Some, but I like, do, I do some of the meals around this house. Yeah, like you know, sugar and salt, man. Like they're two <laughs> great things, but you put salt in a pie when it's supposed to have sugar, and it's yes. not such a great thing, right? The sprinkle. It's got to be a little, a little bit in there, right? Yeah. Otherwise, so you get I, a bland I, pie. Right. So I think it's it's a lot like that, you know, like how can you use what do they call that, man? It's like I feel like they had it in in school. They would kind of talk. It's it's like logic, criti critical thinking. Yes. Like think critically. Don't just do take a step back, analyze the situation and then move forward. You know, Nick, I, 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 I have this conversation with one of my team members and the thing I tell her is like, you know, there's, I'd love for you to give me some candor on the, around this. There's really two kinds of people that I see when it comes to work. There are those that I do well if you give me the direction and I'll follow. I don't want to do a ton, ton of too much critical thinking. And then there's those that thrive on like figuring it out, minimal directions, and they're more your doer types. And understanding which of those two categories that person falls in now sets the stage for okay this person instructions here it is and they're gonna follow it just like you did it they're not gonna put a ton of like hey nick missed step 3b in here right let's add mm -mm, that's not how they think i'm gonna do what you told me to do versus i have the ability to wait a minute nick missed a step in here wait let me nick did you mean to put this in here or not Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You missed it. Okay, that's right. I'll put it in. Boom. Done. Right? And that kind of saves me from like, I'm going too nuts because now, okay, I understand. They're more of a follower. And you know, it doesn't come out right away, especially if they just join your team. It's going to several interactions, several rounds of, and you're like, okay, this person is a doer, more critical thinking. This one is not. Maybe this role isn't appropriate for this person. This, um, let's see if we can transition them because they're still good. They're just not good at that. Let's see if we can put them over there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 uh, it's a good way to look at it. And I really, I used to think of hiring as a function of human resources. I don't know why. I don't really have a reason for that. And then I was talking to someone, and they were like, "No, it's a function of marketing." And boom, my mind exploded. I was like, "Tell me immediately, how, 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 you, how is that?" that is I got it. it because if you think about like a funnel, a mm -hmm. marketing funnel, and yeah. you have top of funnel, uh -huh. your goal is to not sell at top of funnel. Your goal is to not get it right. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to capture as much as you want, and then qualify and get down to what you want hopefully oh, no, no, no. and with hiring it's the same thing like you've really got to figure out you got to cast that wide net first so like Ooh. think of a job application on linkedin yeah now with marketing i always take the approach of all right i'm not trying to catch what i want i'm trying to get rid of what i don't want Ooh. so that's when i'll tell a copywriter so now my head goes i'm like i'm gonna have a writer write my job description and I'm going to tell that writer, I want you, all these people I don't want, this job description should piss them off. They see it and they're out. They're like, I'm out of here, man. Like, I'm not applying for this job. Um, and that led to like a, a form, right? So you, you, you repeat, you repel the people you don't want at the top right. of funnel. Mm. And then you get some people you do want. Now you qualify them with a form. Maybe you have a video interview that's automated with questions yeah, using yeah. a tool like Video Ask, um, and then it comes down to that final stage, which is a job interview. We do three job interviews now, um, and w we're actually bringing in like a third party, like an unbiased person, to do part of that interview. Okay. Um, to really try and and get it right, man, because. It's such a big investment up front, not just money-wise, but time-wise. Right, and well, you really want to yeah. find that, like you said, the role. It's not the person. I'm trying to find someone that fits this role. Uh -huh. um, are they a doer? You know, Do they just need to follow directions? Or do I need someone who's going to be like, hey, Nick, what the heck were you thinking, man? Like, this is a <laughs> terrible way to do this, right? Like, 
Um, hey. cause there's a time and a place, right? Like, right. Uh, there's a, does that role take the sugar or does that role need the salt? Right. right and, right, uh, right. Approaching it from that perspective. So that was a big shift when to someone told me to think about it, uh, as a function of marketing. You know, I, I, we hired somebody in January, um, no last year. So before January and she came in to do a completely different role. We had to let go of our uh, of, of a person on one of, on our media team, one of the people there. Um, she took that role. She, she assumed the the position of this person that left, and she's done a great job. And she'd never done that role before, ever in her life. And for me, it was enlightening because if you have people that are adaptable, they'll say they'll, they'll, they're more doer. I'll take that on, and I'm going to learn versus the person that we had to let go was I only do I only do these five things. Yeah. And you're asking me to do the six or replace or think about replacing one and do what you're asking me, it's not really what I do. And she served a role while we were in that stage. Now we're, we're as a company, as an organization, we're somewhere totally different right now. Can you adjust? And that person couldn't. And this person that took over changed the way I hire. I'm not gonna hire exactly based i'm looking for an it guy yes but if they have um you know sql experience versus ai no i'm looking for a guy that can in this role i want you to be able to troubleshoot i want you to problem solve a little more i want you yeah. to can you think logically because in it crap happens right something shuts down blah, blah, blah. and i want somebody that can kind of think about all the different it problems right versus in a role like you're saying sugar or salt versus you know i only want a guy that knows ai because i'm going to put him in the place where all oh, he's going to deal all day with this with ai no i'm going to have him deal with these 10 things and he's got to be able to navigate these 10 things if yeah. not you're out yep yep it's always and i think it boils back down to like you know communication and being clear and not assuming anything because there's a there's a there's a place for everything Right. Yeah. Like the, nothing's really good or bad. It's just like, you know, do we need this right now? What does this situation call for? What does this role call for? The uh, executive coaching, our coach Susan from Concilio, uh, she had a good analogy of like blinders on a horse. Ugh. And some people, you know, you only want them to see the path forward. Right. But then some people you want to open it up and, you know, can they see the whole view of the business, the 360 view? Does it right. need to be 360? Maybe it's 180, 270, whatever. Uh, but that was a good analogy that helped me Ooh. understand like what I, I like really that. need from someone. Well, I like that. And you know, you probably can't control everything. You know, that's the other human nature. Uh, you know, we, we deal in IT more uh, and I always say it's much, much harder to deal with the human aspect. Yeah. When it comes to new technology, whatever, versus the technology itself. It's, it comes with a manual. Right. Yeah. So you yeah, know yeah. when it's not working right, humans don't come with a manual. And right. the human aspect is so tricky. It can be yeah. so complex because people are complex. Yeah. And um, you know, having the right team around you is is a, it's more of an art than a science. I wish there was a a surefire ten point way to hire and fire the right people. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. It can be. It can be tough. I think I certainly make it tough. And I think that's where, because it can also be simple, but I think that's where simple doesn't mean easy, right? Uh -huh. Like there's a difference there. Um, but yeah, focusing on what you can control. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Like the person I hired, six grand a month, um, I could be mad. That person did this. That person did that. She should have done this, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Guess what good that does me? Nothing because mm -hmm. I can't control that. Like, and you, but what right. I can control is how I do it next time. Mm -hmm. All right. It's so you, you learned, I would imagine a lot from that, just like I learned from, from the person that we had to let go. You, and that's one of those things. I, I think Gary Vee recently said this on one of his videos, losing is not bad. It's just the way you look at it. So if we lost an employee, what, what are we gaining? Which yeah. is valuable knowledge. Maybe we shouldn't do it this way. Yep. Right, we've been doing this way for three years. Well, time to time to throw that playbook out, right? So you're not really losing, losing. You're gaining valuable information. Right. Yeah, and that's the best way to look at it with anything in life, because there's always that light at the end of the tunnel, 
and it only takes a little bit of light to get rid of the darkness, right? Like you only need a little piece of light to brighten up that dark room and yeah. move forward. Um, Gary V also said something that hit me. Uh, someone asked me, he was like, hey, how do, I, how do I get better at hiring? And he was like, you don't. You get better. You get better at firing. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, "Yeah, didn't he that's say it." Like, like uh, you hire, uh, you hire fast, but you fire faster, or something like that. Yeah, it may be. That sounds like because I, in my head, I'm thinking like hire slow, fire fast. But you know, Gary V, he kind of goes against the grain, right? Yes, so no, that I, sounds I like something. something like that. Yeah, fire faster, hire fast, yeah. but 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 fire even faster. Yeah. No, it's 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 really it's tough, but you know. I think that's also for for us that are in this space, e-commerce, Amazon, um, entrepreneurs. It's I think that the the job itself is not for everybody. I heard somebody that I like to watch on TikTok. He's um, his name is Rafi, and he as he's out of New York City and he owns a kennel business. Okay, and, and so somebody asked him. What advice do you have for somebody that wants to go into their own business? And he said, and he said something really just straight up blunt. He's like, this is not for everybody. You're going to have days where you may miss uh, an important event. You may need to travel and you miss, you know, a birthday or maybe, you know, because of the holiday season, you're, you're paying attention to what's happening at the warehouse. And, you know, all of these things that require some fortitude. You know, when we're talking about side hustle where somebody's on the weekend doing something, that's one thing. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just a side hustle. It, does, it may not mean this much, but if your life depended on your income, your ability to pay the bills, and you're in all in, you got to understand there are going to be some rough days. And they're going to, this is not for the weak being an entrepreneur. Because, like you said, you, you hire the wrong person, and that's going to cause some heartburn. It will yeah. cause heartburn when you hire the wrong person. Do you want to deal with that? I mean, I was talking to Kevin King, and he said to me, to me that, you know, he used to have big teams. Too much heartburn for him. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing now. So, Kevin, if you're out there, I'm paraphrasing <laughs> what you said to me. And so maybe you're not cut out for a big team. You structure your business if you want to jump into entrepreneurship. So in a way, so that you don't have to need a lot of people. You're automating more. Maybe you have a, a, a very lean team. Or, or products that don't require a lot of hand holding, right? He does calendars. You know, he, there's not a lot of support that you need with right. calendars or like right. IT or some other more complex product. But so understanding yourself, yes, as a as a person, really goes a long way to how you set yourself up for for success and failure. Yeah, I think it's key knowing yourself. Like this isn't 1975, right? Like you don't just have to ch- or 95. Like you don't have to just chase money for the sake of money. Like a business, your your business can be an extension of yourself. It can be a vehicle to living the life that you want to live, and that doesn't necessarily mean you need a bunch of money. Like maybe you just need you know, more time to do the things you love. Maybe you move to a country where your dollar goes a lot farther and now you can work less and be with your family, hang out with your wife, like whatever it is. Yeah, I hear that from MDS people that are moving to Puerto Rico. I mean, uh, uh, one of the guys I know from MDS is over there. He says he loves it and there's a budding community sprouting in Puerto Rico and I'm hearing more people talk about Portugal. Uh, Yes. And it's a question, you know, I ask myself even more like, Hmm, what if I could get 30% more on my dollar? Yeah. You know, living in another country. And some people have done it. They've like moved to, you know, other countries to stretch their dollar because like you said, you know, like, uh, maybe I don't want to try to run to eight figures. It's going to, I'm going to lose way more of my hair trying to get there. Yeah. I'm good right here. So how can I live better? I was talking to, uh, I did a podcast with um, Jason from MDS and he was talking about, uh, he does AZ Seller Kit, great software for Amazon sellers. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from New York, great guy. Uh, that was a really good podcast, but he said something that really stuck with me. He, Cause he got into a position where I guess somebody wanted to buy him out. Mm. And he was weighing the pros and cons and obviously a pro was all the money. Yep. And uh, a con was like a loss of how he spends his time, kind of having to start over. And he was like, you know what? If I had all that money, I wouldn't even spend it. 
Mm. And okay. that really stuck with me because it's like, like, yeah, what would I, because I had a money goal. I had a number. Now yeah. I don't have a number. I don't care. Like, I really don't care from a personal perspective. Obviously, the business, we have metrics we need to hit and stuff. Right. But from a personal perspective, dude, I don't, I don't care. I can always, like, I've had no money. I've yeah. had negative money <laughs> before, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, like, I'm in yeah. debt. You know heck what I yeah. mean? Like, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to eat? Where am I going to sleep tonight? Like, I figured it out. So yeah. I don't need to worry. I'm not really, that doesn't scare me anymore. Um, and I, you just get caught on, like, hitting this target, hitting this money goal. And yeah. like you said, it was, it was. I think you said last, last co- uh, podcast, it was aging me, right? I think, I think you were yeah. talking about seller support. It was aging it me. Was. It, it, added, it yeah. adds years to your life, man. I, I would uh, echo again, if you haven't heard that, go back and listen to that. But yeah, I would also remind if anybody, if you're going to do Amazon seriously, you absolutely need to have somebody on your team that is devoted to tickets, support, because I'm going to tell you, for me, it was aging me dealing with Amazon. And, oh man, we got lucky in hiring this, this person who who worked in the Amazon side on the support team and she understood the nuances. And, and I told her recently, like, I don't know how I, I, I'd give you a virtual kiss if you were here yeah. because you know, you're, you've been valuable. Like I can sleep at night. Like that stuff for me gives me heartburn. Like yeah, what? And then you see the email, like, wait a minute, man. Just, I sent the information you ask. I know I'm not losing my marbles. Right. Everything you're oh, asking man. more asking for a note in that email i sent the first and second time and they asked it's just a copy paste response so having to take that off my plate and let somebody else do it and i meet with her now once a week she says well this is what's happening this is what i'm working on here's what here's what we were able to fix it's so refreshing then like you are in the trenches yourself like fighting hand-to-hand combat with sellers seller support on amazon yeah it's uh not something I want to be doing for sure, man. It's, uh, you know, I don't even think you get real people most of the time, right? Like they just, I don't think it's real people. It's just it's a just machine back there. And then they throw like a really good name. It'll be like beautiful, right? It's like, you can't just end this message and tell me your name's beautiful oh, or whatever. Like they always the have name some that great got name. circulated in there. Yeah. Like, no, this isn't <laughs> popping off right now. You know, we, you know something I learned recently from, talking about support if we if we could just give some some sellers some some information that came my way yes health assurance so if you are on seller central and you're you're on, and you, you'll see this thing that says health assurance and it's got a metric there it says your rating is whatever it is and it's got a green check mark a lot of people think that that's bs well we had a case recently nick where it was serious one of our employees went a little bit too beyond the pale, let's say it. And they, Amazon didn't like it. Okay. At the end of the day, we were able to, they gave us the clean bill of health. No wrongdoing. You didn't do anything wrong. We submitted everything as, as, as they requested it. Well, come to find out once the, this case wrapped up, I learned something. Amazon's health assurance is an actual team that is separate from the enforcement people which are like the Amazon police. You do something wrong three years ago, cut your account. Yeah, three Suspension, years ago. Yeah. Right? You did, you did one little thing wrong or we think, or we think, we think you did something wrong. Boom, shut, shut it down. Shut down the, now there's still that going on with listings and that's the whole thing, but they would shut down accounts much more fast because now this team called Account Health Assurance is separate from the Amazon police. And that's what I was told. They they act as the liaison to help sellers not get thrown off the platform like like that. They give you a window of time. They told me you have 72 hours to submit information to them. If you don't, then that's it. Boom. They do shut you down, especially with something more egregious. In addition to that, they are the team to collect things holistically. So let's say, yeah, I did something. My bad. You caught me. I did something wrong. They're going to try to take into account in the entire big picture of what oh, have you been doing wrong for the last, like for 10 years? No, clean, clean bill of health. You know, you got something here that showed up. Are you going to address it? You're going to fix it? Yes, yes. And yes. But if you've had a record of 
wrong, 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 it doesn't look so good for you. Right. So as long as the health assurance rating stays on the good side of things, you, this team works on your behalf when shit hits the fan, if I could say yeah. that. When a lot of it hits the fan. And for us, it really kept me up at night because the first interaction with them was like, well, we could close your account, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, crap, I've never heard this before. We, In the end, keep your health assurance numbers, address any violations within an adequate time, hit the ones that are either high or medium, because they did tell me, by the way, bots have gone wild. And some of those are the suspected IP complaints or bots other violations. Bots gone wild, man. They, and they go wild periodically, he told me. And they, those come up as medium and high violations, especially if they're repeat. And that's all due to the bots. Yeah. And you can't ignore those. That, that's what he told me. Now, that wasn't our issue that we were dealing with. But he did say as a side to keep the health number nice and healthy, address those even though that they're bots. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely good information because there's always like new things that Amazon's rolling out. And maybe you get an email, maybe you don't, but... Um, like a couple things come to mind off that, um, you know, you really need someone who's in there every day. Like you can't just be a hands-off Amazon guy at our level. Like well, you imagine need to be you have 72 hours things. to respond. Nick. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> 72 hours. Cause they're giving you a, a, a grace period basically yeah. to say, yep, we're on it. Right. That's all we're on it. And I'm going to get you the info versus, yeah. oh shit. That was a week, a week ago. Yeah. Now you're like. Right, you're scrambling because your account is suspended. They tell you, "Yeah, we sent you a notification." Yeah, you, you and I think that, that circles back to so many things we talked about earlier, like knowing yourself, finding the right person. Because I'll go a week without checking my email. Like I'm not. If if you want to get a hold of me urgently, email is not the way. Most people around me know that. Like call me on the phone. Um, so you really need someone who is that type of person. And I'm never going to be that type of person because it drives me crazy to be in my email yes. all the time because I get I get distracted from what I'm really doing. Yeah. Um, and email's so like 90s. It's yeah. The, the, I don't like email because I like the, uh, the ability to, you know, you, you may be more into Slack and we're, we use Hangouts. We're more yeah, Google-oriented okay. here. But, I, hey, I tell them, put it into my Hangouts. I'm going to get to it because email yeah. is just full of things I can't control. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, we've talked about a lot of good things that segue into that. Like how, yep. how can you be a father, a mother or whatever it is, a caretaker and an entrepreneur when you have to deal with things like this 72 hours to get back to yeah, somebody. I, mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but it seems like we may need a little bit more time to dive into the whole, yes. how to be a father or mother. Mothers have it even harder, right? How to be? I know for me it's hard, and boy, we can get into this. But I think we should we should do maybe a series or something. Because that there's a lot to unpack there. New father, teenage, teen, have a teen, or yeah, growing the business and being a father or mother. I'd I'd love to talk more about it too because it's it's not easy. Yeah, we're gonna do it, man. We'll put together like a three part series or something, and and roll this out in a week or two. Uh, I've got four kids myself from eleven uh, all the way to one. You're going to get I've a gold been, star at the yeah. pearly gates, my man. You and my brother, you're both in that same category. And it's been great. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. And I think it's it's one of those things. Like, we can make it simple or we can make it complicated. And it boils down to really know it, knowing yourself uh, and being very intentional about what you're doing day to day. Uh, and that's, I think, some of the things I can bring to the table and, and mention my mistakes and my changes and, and my goals for that well i have nothing to add that's that's so well said nick um uh, i'm looking forward to diving into that because i'm seriously looking forward to seeing what you've learned and what want to share and I, maybe i'll air just all my my grievances with you all right sounds good well we'll do it next time all right nick thank you all right thank you <laughs>